Uh, thanks so much for having me. Um, my name is Anya Makwad. I'm a director of She's Lost Control. Um, it's sort of my first time in Montreal, I guess. If you discount one overnight drive through, that didn't really show me the beauty of the city. So last night, you know, just walking to the theater was amazing because there's so much public art and so many lights and, and images everywhere. So the protagonist of the film, she's called Rona, and she is um, working as a surrogate partner in New York City. And it's, it's sort of a, um, a fascinating um, subculture that I stumbled across, and I found it to be very modern and, and sort of surprising that someone could do this in front of our eyes. We would maybe, you know, think that she's, uh, you know, she could be our neighbor, she could be someone we, we meet a thousand times on the street because she looks very normal. She doesn't necessarily look like a, a sex worker, but she is, um, you know, among other things, she is uh, sleeping with her clients and teaching them how to be intimate. So this is a very interesting sort of um, volatile and, and deeply human um, setup. I really set out to make a, a film where I could um, you know, put a strong emphasis on working with actors because I just love that. I love being on set and working with actors. And so, you know, we, we had this, this script and, and this project where it was clear that the lead actress would have to be in every scene. She would have to be naked on set. She, she would have to really throw herself out there and be brave and vulnerable and strong and dark and beautiful and um, ugly sometimes and everything. So when I found Brooke, I had already gone through some, some um, intense casting and um, eventually decided to push the shoot for six months to be able to work with her because she was uh, in another commitment at the time and I, I really you know, found her at the 11th hour as it happened sometimes. It was so strange um, just finding her and, and all of a sudden I just had this epiphany of this inner uh, moment of calm where I thought, okay, I got a movie. I think, you know, having sort of um, the freedom of making a, a film um, without any any sort of, you know, entity above that would say, okay, this is how you have to shoot it or this is how you have to edit it. It was a wonderful uh, way to make a first feature and, and the limitations in terms of budget really became one of our biggest assets, I think, because it's, um, you know, I, I can't imagine having done this film in a better way in terms of having more of freedom or more um, freedom of choice in terms of the people I wanted to work with. It was just really, you know, I, I consider myself very lucky. I, I sort of picked the best people I, I could find and I would work with them in a heartbeat. So as the film has been traveling around the world and, and you know, I've been able, luckily I've been able to go to many festivals myself and present the film and, you know, it's it's incredibly meaningful and exciting to talk to the audience afterwards and I just understand who they are and it's it's just so uh, um, great to see that they're from all walks of life you know very different ages um, and I just hope that going forward with this film and releasing it on different platforms um, I, I just hope that this audience keeps to grow and uh, um, the people that really are championing it that that they uh, will find a way to to uh, recommend it to other people and, and sort of you know take it from there. I think it's it's a word of mouth film for sure. I I hope so.